All right, now we're back here talking about the, the Sega Genesis. Uh, th this console was my console as a kid. The Sega Genesis was the one that uh, I played constantly. Um, I, I had the, the NES for a little bit, and that was really like, probably I had that before I was five maybe, because I remember getting the Genesis when I was five, and Sonic 2 rocked my world. That game, New League Football, New League Hockey, uh, the Streets of Rage games, holy shit, though those fucking games blew my mind. And uh, I, I played that for hours and hours and beat those games uh, from beginning to back. Uh, just, yeah, I, I played the hell out of the Sega Genesis. This was uh, another gift, along with that Saturn that I was talking about from uh, my friend uh, Walter Swirly Game Fat Cat. Uh, he's a really great guy, and that just gave this to me. Now, this was a, another good deal that I got off an eBay lot. Um, I got this, uh, an N64, and a Super Nintendo that, uh, that was like 75 bucks or something like that. But I didn't actually spend a dime of any of my money. I took a DVD collection I had and traded that in. It was just a, an even trade. So I thought that was good because I don't even watch those uh, DVDs anymore. But I am uh, really into my games. And the top loading NES was uh, the more superior NES. Then this one just worked. The, the, the toaster one, I, which I still got, uh, that just doesn't work. I, I can sit there and go, <laughs> and it doesn't matter. The game's not going to play. The console's just not going to work. The, the light's just going to flash and flash and flash. And it just says, fuck you, I'm not going to play. Not the top loader. This thing works every single time. If you're going to play Nintendo, yeah, it's got the RF connection that is good video and audio. Who cares? It works. That's all that I'm concerned with is that the thing works. So that's why I prefer the top loader, and I'm really glad that I got one because these things are a little bit harder to come by. The PS1. Holy crap. Uh, like, I, like how I had a passion for the Genesis, this was it when I was a teenager uh, with the PS1. I, I played this thing constantly. Uh, Final Fantasy VII, as I was talking about earlier, I played that for a year straight. I just played that game constantly, and then Final Fantasy IX, played that one a lot too, which uh, I'm going to say right now, it was it's a better game than the 7. Final Fantasy IX is way better. Um, and then you had the a good racing games like Ridge Racer, you got the Resident Evil games. Uh, there, there's just literally hundreds, maybe even thousands of games that came out for this system that are just fantastic. And I, I loved PS1, got this for 10 bucks. PS2, same thing, got this for 10 bucks. Uh, so many good games as well that came out for the PS2, and I feel this is really like when PlayStation uh, hit their stride. It was uh, with this console, because uh, you know the, the backwards compatibility. That was the one thing that was you know going to the, the PS3. They had that backwards compatibility for the first gen, and then they just took it all away. Like you know, fuck you, PlayStation fans. You can't play all the old games. You had to buy the system again because we want more of your money. And that's just how they continue to do business because the PS4 is not compatible with PS3. So I feel the PS2, they just got it right. And even with the second model, the slim model, that one still played all the PS1 games. So I feel that this is like the PlayStation console to have. The only drawback is that uh, the PS1, uh, that one had the GameShark port. There's not a GameShark port on this. So you can't plug in your GameShark to do any GameShark cheats with your PS1 games. Also, there is a, a light gun that uh, I'll talk about in a little bit, that uh, that plugged into the back of the console. So unless you had a Model 1 PS1, you weren't gonna be able to play uh, certain kinds of light games or light gun games with that gun because they had to plug into the back of the console. So I guess that's the drawback to playing your PS1 games on the PS2. But other than that, I feel that this is the way to go. Again, I got this for 10 bucks. A uh, hell of a deal and just great games all around for this system. Okay, so I was just about that light gun. Uh, this is the one I was talking about. And uh, just, you know, holy crap. I mean, they don't even make stuff like this anymore. Look how huge this is. You, you're not going to get a light gun like this for the Xbox One or PS4. I don't even think they're thinking about making guns like that or games like that because it, it doesn't even work uh, on these new HGTVs. You can't play uh, your old game, old light gun games on the HGTV because it needs to be a CRT TV because of the tubes and stuff like that. So that's something to keep in mind. If you have a flat screen TV and you want to get, get back into retro gaming, you're going to need an old box TV because it's just, they don't work on flat screens. That's just the bottom line. It doesn't work. So, uh, but this gun is just, look at this. This, this thing's a beast. I got this for five bucks. Uh, this, this thing's just fucking cool. I, I, I tried to play a light gun game. I have Die Hard Trilogy, the second game. Apparently you can use the light gun for, 
but it didn't work. So I don't know if the gun doesn't work, but even if it doesn't work, five bucks. I mean, this thing's cool just for five bucks. And uh, this cartridge, this thing is freaking cool, man. The uh, Sega Genesis EverDrive. What this allows me to do, it allows me to play every single Sega Genesis game that ever came out and I get to play it on my console. I don't have to use an emulator and uh, download all these different ROMs and stuff like that because sometimes the ROMs, they don't work right and you're not going to get the same kind of sound uh, out, out of the actual hardware. So this is cool being able to play uh, all the Sega Genesis games on my Sega Genesis with the controller and uh, it's just like playing the game but I don't have to go out there and look for the games and uh, gotta spend tons of money to get some of the games because some of these games are like really rare and expensive like Musha uh, it's a uh, kind of a shooting game like Raiden or something like that vertical shooter that game's $200 I'm not gonna spend $200 on a single game that's just not gonna happen so I got this thing 50 bucks and uh, I get to play the entire library off this one cartridge so this is a really cool thing and I suggest that uh, if you haven't uh, your original consoles. They, they make these EverDrives for everything. Uh, you can go to the, the website RetroGate.com. They're awesome. Uh, I got another one on the way that's coming. And uh, it's a good site to go to if you're going to buy these kind of cartridges like this. Uh, yeah, that's what I have to say. That's kind of awesome. All right, hitting the home stretch here. We're talking about some uh, NES games that I got in 2014. Uh, first one up here we got is Batman. Keeping the camera. Batman. Batman. Great game right there. Uh, holy crap, Th that game just blew my mind, and blew probably everyone's mind. The music, the action, a purple Batman, how can you top that? <laughs> my <laughs> lord. Yeah, re really, I mean, that game's just, <laughs> it's just awesome. Alright, then here uh, we got Wizards and Warriors. Um, I've never played that game. I don't know if it's anything like Gauntlet or anything like that. Raheem played this game. Okay, well yeah, Raheem, if you're out there, uh, leave a comment, let us know. How uh, Riz Wizards and Warriors uh, is, and if it's a good game, we should play it. <laughs> <laughs> Here is a classic, 1942. Oh, the arcade version was a masterpiece. Oh uh, yeah, that, that game, it, the arcade one was a masterpiece. Uh, the the port though, going from the arcade to back to the NES, playing it now as an adult, uh, I I feel it doesn't hold up as well. The the sound effects. Holy crap, I want to stab, stab myself in the ears. It's just <laughs> bad. Really, really bad. Uh, Xenophobe. Um, it might look cool because it's got an alien on it. And you're thinking, oh, it's, if it's anything like the alien movies, it's got to be a uh, fast-paced action, side-scrolling shooting, an intense game. But it couldn't be any further from the case. That game is just very slow-paced. And uh, it's got, like, dual screens, I guess, to try to be revolutionary, but it just doesn't work. But it has an alien on the cover. It, it has got an alien. I mean, that, 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 Look at that, right there. Yeah. That's worth 60 bucks right there. Yeah. Look at that. That's what it would have cost you back on. <laughs> and here, we got uh, Gogo 13. Um, I don't know a lot about this guy. Apparently, he's supposed to be, like, the James Bond uh, of Japan. That he's supposed to be like the bad dude over there in Japan. I know that he's got manga and anime, and uh, he's supposed to be like a really legit badass assassin kind of guy. Um, the game, I've seen some videos on it, and it looks okay at best. But I got it for a dollar, so hey, why not? I don't think I ever played this one. I really don't think I played this one. <laughs> uh, here we go. We got uh, Narc. This game, uh, it's pretty cool. You know, it's like a. Uh, you know, taking out drug dealers and stuff like that, and uh, it was kind of like the very first kind of crime uh, game that was out back then. You didn't have too much stuff like this back in the NES days, and uh, they made a newer one, I think, for the PS2, and that game was okay. Uh, and th that game's pretty good, though. Not for the NES, that's definitely the far superior one. Decent game right there. So I'm just trying to be a hand model, it's not working? Yeah, this has got a beautiful hand. Jerk off too much? Yeah. A little, a little bit rough. <laughs> Tiger Heli. That game is far superior compared to 1942. The music Indeed. in that game is just, oh my god, it blows me away. The way that you can get the, the side chopper and then the, the little one on the front, how you can collect these little helicopters that shoot different uh, angles and stuff and to the side, makes the gameplay so much uh, more fast paced and frantic and just more an intense gameplay overall. That is one of the be best shooting games I've played on the NES. Then we got RC Pro-Am. 
that is a classic racing game right there. I don't know if you ever played that one, but this game is it, pretty cool. It's like uh, like a battle kind of racing game where you pick up all these different uh, items that you can use against your opponents to make a mess up while you're playing the game. Uh, really cool racing game. I suggest that uh, everyone check this out. And uh, last but not least, we got a TNC Surf Design. Uh, you're like a bear that surfs. <laughs> Whoa. A surfing bear. Yeah, that's right, brother. Well, I, I don't think I played this one. Uh, I, I haven't played it yet. Oh, I, I, I that's see, why. Yeah, you see that little rainbow there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, LJ, yeah. <laughs> that lets you know right there. Masterpiece right here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that that is could probably be one of the best games that you'll ever play. Uh, TNC surf design. <laughs> So uh, that's really uh, all that I got that I've got for uh, 2014. It was uh, a great year for collecting uh, video games. Obviously, I'm a very big uh, Transformers collector. 2014 wasn't really so much the year for that. Uh, I, I got a couple things. Maybe I'll do a different video talking about Transformers on another day. But uh, that's all the game stuff that I got last year. I plan on taking it to another level here in 2015 and uh, really boosting up my Sega Saturn collection and uh, other stuff that I really want to start getting into. I, like I said, I got the uh, EverDrive coming for the NES. Uh, I got an SD card for N64 that I got. And uh, want to get the EverDrive for that as well and EverDrive for the SNES. That'd be cool things to have. But uh, that's all I got for you guys today. Just wanted to show you guys a little something different here. Uh, also my good friend here, Brian, over there at State of Disgrace. Great show. Go over there and check him out. Uh, so yeah, you guys have a good one and uh, enjoy yourselves and keep on gaming.